tells us in the epistle to the Romans that the life and death of each of us has its impact on others. He says that about the members of the Christian community who by baptism have become the body of Christ. And yes, the impact of Father Bob Bedard on each of us is due to the primordial act of our faith, namely that Christ Jesus died on the cross for each one of us and for our sins that he gloriously rose from the dead and shares his risen life with us, each of us individually and all of us collectively. This is what has brought us here together this afternoon to live out this mystery in the great act of thanksgiving, the Eucharist, so that Father Bob's passing may be received fully into that mystery and so that the graces of the Paschal mystery may console and strengthen us as we wait in joyful hope for Christ coming again in glory. For we await the day when we too will anticipate the reality of the coming of Christ in the mystery of our death, our passing over to life with God to the full. Nous sommes réunis autour de notre frère prêtre, Bob, à l'heure de son passage vers le Seigneur, pour le recommander à sa miséricorde. Nous voulons aussi, par notre présence, entourer de notre sympathie et de notre amitié les membres de sa famille et ses proches qui sont dans la peine. Je salue particulièrement Monseigneur Lopez Quintana, dans nos apostolique, qui est le représentant de Saint-Père ici au Canada. I'd like also to recognize the presence of Emeritus Archbishop Marcel Gervais, who presided over the accession of the Companions of the Cross to the status of the Society of Apostolic Life several years ago. I note also that Archbishop Plourd, who would like to have been with us here today, and who sometimes considers himself the co-founder of the Companions of the Cross, <laughs> you all know Archbishop Plourd, uh, sends his best wishes and prayers for this occasion. He regrets he's unable to be with us. I offer the sympathy to the Companions of the Cross, to the seminarians, the servants of the Cross. I also welcome my brother priests here, faithful deacons, religious sisters, and all you, the lay faithful, who in any way have been touched by the life and ministry of Father Bob Badar. Let us now open ourselves to God's holy word and prepare ourselves to be nourished at the table of the Lord. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned from my own fault in my thoughts and in my words and in what I have said and done. I have not been faithful to my May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Lord, hear the prayers we offer for Robert, your servant and priest. He faithfully fulfilled his ministry to your name. May he rejoice forever in the fellowship of your saints. Grant this to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen.
A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and will bring us with you into his presence. Yes, everything is for your sake, so that grace, as it extends to more and more people, may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So we do not lose heart, even though our outer nature is wasting away. Our inner nature is renew being renewed day by day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure, because we look not at what can be seen, but what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. The word of the Lord. Yeah. 
you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Carrying the cross by himself, Jesus went out to what is called the place of the skull, which in Hebrew is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, with Jesus between them. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her into his own home. After this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, he said, in order to fulfill the scripture, I am thirsty. The jar full of sour wine was standing there. So they put a sponge full of the wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the wine, he said, It is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Dear Archbishop Lopez Quintana, who represents His Holiness Pope Benedict XVI, Archbishop Prendergast, Archbishop Gervais, all priests and religious, especially my brother companions of the cross and our sisters, the servants of the cross, our lay associates and all the faithful. I'd like to thank you all for being here today. We're more grateful than we could ever hope to express. Though Father Bob has been very ill and steadily declining for some time, and though we are relieved and grateful that to see that the sufferings he has endured these last years are finally at an end, it is still a very bittersweet moment. Today we are commending into God's loving embrace a man and a priest who has done enormous good for Christ and his church. He was a driving force of renewal, a leader of the Marian movement, a much sought after speaker and teacher, especially in matters pertaining to church renewal and the renewal of the priesthood, and a pioneer, both of the new Pentecost in our time and of the new evangelization. He yearned wholeheartedly to see the Catholic Church, the church he loved with every fiber of his being, come fully alive to Jesus, living and vibrant. And he extended himself completely, even at the price of his own health, to see it realized. To the companions of the cross and the servants of the cross, and to our many lay associates, he was and remains our spiritual father in Christ, the one who handed on to us the vision and the mission of renewal that God has planted in his heart. A vision for renewal empowered by a meaningful common life and spirituality. And he was and remains for us a deeply cherished brother and friend. And to countless others, he was a gifted teacher, pastor, coach, a fiery preacher who set hearts on fire for the Lord. A gentle, one could even say tender, fatherly presence, 
who is always available, it seemed, with a listening ear and a compassionate heart. Someone who always remembered your name and what mattered to you, who made you feel special, who had an uncanny way of speaking affirmation and healing into hearts. Someone who taught us how to take God very seriously, but not to take ourselves too seriously. His proper full name, of course, was Reverend Robert Joseph Bedard, but to us, to all of us, he was Father Bob. And somehow that just seems to say it all. His impact was amazing and incredibly far-reaching. I've met people as far away as East Africa who heard a tape, found an article, read a book. Lives were changed as a result. To say that he will be and has already been deeply, deeply missed just doesn't begin to sum it up. Now there are a few things that bothered Father Bob more than funeral homilies that really were, as he would say, just hasty beatifications. <laughs> and I remember him saying in a way that only he could that when his time came he wanted everyone to sing and to praise the Lord to pray his sorry self out of purgatory. <laughs> and above all, he wanted the gospel proclaimed. Now wanting to be faithful to his wishes and also because I don't want to face him raising that enormous questioning eyebrow towards me. <laughs> when we do finally meet again, I will try my best. But I want to do so by highlighting a few of the truths that characterized his own ministry and his own experience of the Lord. <coughs> Father Bob believed with an impassioned conviction that Jesus Christ is not just some remote historical figure, but that he truly, truly is risen from the dead. That he is the Lord of the church and of all creation. That he is alive and that he is on the move. Not just 2,000 years ago, but here, now, today. And this means that he can be known and loved. And to Father Bob, this was the greatest treasure of his life. And he wanted everyone to share it. He once wrote the following. We have been tantalized by Jesus. We have been fascinated by him, dazzled. We have been trapped and captured we are prisoners of the Lord, but we are delighted to be in his custody. We would not want it any other way. We're able to say with St. Paul that we have reappraised all else as rubbish in the light of knowing Christ Jesus, that we are now racing to capture the prize for which he has captured us. Father Bob was convinced that the Lord Jesus was nothing more than to reveal himself to each and every one of us in the Holy Spirit, to really capture our hearts and to draw us into an intimate, personal, loving relationship with himself. He yearns to awaken us, to give us new life, to transform us, and to mobilize us for his own mission. Jesus, still reconciling the world to the Father, has plans. Father Bob would tell us again and again, plans for the church, yes, but also for every parish, every community, every family, every diocese, and each and every one of us personally. He often quoted the Lord speaking through the prophet Jeremiah, I know the plans I have in mind for you, says the Lord. Plans for peace and not for woe. If you seek me, you will find me. If you seek me with your whole heart, I will let you find me. To Father Bob, there was only one sane response to this living, loving Lord Jesus. Complete surrender. And he said this in as many creative ways as one could possibly imagine. Not only that we should consciously deliberately surrender to Jesus, but he called us to give the Lord the red carpet, the green light, the white flag of surrender, 
He encouraged people to make what he called the offer. Whatever you want me to do, Lord, I will do it. And perhaps most memorably, he called everyone to do what the Lord had taught him to do. Give God permission. Yes, permission. Permission to do with us, or with anything for that matter, whatever he wanted, because he respects our freedom. And he wants that permission. He would often say that the will of God is the only thing worth doing. And that we need to trust the Lord and follow Him, even when we don't completely understand. Because He loves us. And it is inconceivable, it is impossible that He could ever lead us astray. He knows us better than we know ourselves, and He is more invested in our own happiness than we are ourselves. And not just in eternity, but for the fullness of life even here and now. We need to make Him Lord of our lives, He would say. Lord of everything, our relationships, our families, our job, our money, yes, that too, our time, everything. And if we do this, we will never regret it. Oh, He might mess up our perfectly laid plans, but as Father Bob would say again and again, we'll be glad, we'll be glad that He did. He might do things we never expected or imagined, but eventually we will thank Him for it. Father Bob used to say that when we let the Lord take over, hang on. Because He is the Lord of the unexpected, the God of surprises. He had a deep and tender devotion to Mary. To Him she was, and I quote him, that little something extra that God gives to those to whom He has already given everything. But even His devotion to her was firmly rooted in surrender to Jesus. To Father Bob, Mary was summed up in her exhortation at Cana, do whatever He tells you. Mary was for Him the model of Christian discipleship precisely because she was perfectly surrendered to her Son and because she shows us how to do the same. One of the best lessons I ever had about being a disciple of Jesus was watching Father Bob very early, morning after morning, walk into the chapel, bow his head right to the ground before our Lord's Eucharistic presence, and quietly say under his breath, Not ready, Lord, but willing. He knew he wasn't equal to the tasks before him but he trusted with unshakable faith that Jesus would give him everything he needed to do whatever he asked. Not ready, Lord, but willing. And he really meant it. He used to say that he would even push a peanut down Bank Street with his nose, <laughs> if that's what the Lord asked him to do. If that would bring glory to God and save souls, he'd do it. I thought of that often visiting Father Bob in the hospital and the nursing home these last 33 months. Racked with dementia, seizures, Miller-Fisher syndrome, brain trauma, heart arrhythmia, sleep apnea, and a host of other symptoms. And he never complained. Not once. He had offered the Lord all his suffering for this community and for its mission of evangelization. And it seems that the Lord in His love used Father Bob for souls right to the very end. He never did roll that peanut down Bank Street, but he did live out in his own flesh a depth of love and surrender equal to any that I have ever seen. One of the things that he never tired of reminding us as priests and seminarians was that surrender didn't only apply to the laity, it applied to us in a particular way. The Lord wants to run His church. He wants to be consulted. Over and over again, He would tell it to us this way. We should seek the Lord's Word relentlessly and make no major moves without it, no exceptions. That we had to learn to wait upon the Lord, to see what He was doing and support it. He drilled into us the idea that while there are many good things to do, it is God's things that will make the difference. In other words, that our ministry had to be rooted in seeking, 
hearing, responding, and following the Lord's will. For Father Bob, discipleship and leadership could not mean anything less than total surrender. Just make the offer, he would say, and don't worry. The Lord will help you live it out. To Father Bob, it was always the cross that it was at the center of this wonderful adventure in Christ. Christ crucified was the power and the wisdom of God as Jesus hung upon the cross. His infinite power revealed in his mercy, washing away our sins, conquering the enemy, restoring us in love to the Father. His infinite wisdom revealed is the logic of love, an unconditional, foolish love, a love that could not bear to be separated from us. These are truths Father Bob never tired of proclaiming. It used to literally drive him crazy that anyone could have attended a Catholic school or sat in the pews every Sunday their whole lives and still not really heard and personally received the startling good news that God loves them unconditionally. In fact, that he was crazy about them. And that this was the whole reason that Jesus died on the cross. To save them, to set them free. So that they could say yes to him. Receive him and accept him. So that they could love God as Father here in this life and forever. But he also insisted that Christ crucified the power and wisdom of God. Wasn't just something 2,000 years ago. Christ crucified remains the power and wisdom of God. In a living way. Here and now, Christ crucified with the scars still in his hands and feet and side is truly risen, alive, reigning as Lord, and he still gives us his wisdom. First and foremost, he gives us his general wisdom through sacred scripture and tradition under the guidance of the magisterium, of course, but he also gives us his particular wisdom. He speaks directly into our hearts, into our circumstances, into our lives, to give us his now word, to guide us day to day as a true, loving shepherd. Father Bob taught us to ask the Lord everything, to seek his wisdom, to wait upon it with discernment, and with determination to carry it out no matter what it was. And our Lord still gives us power through the Holy Spirit. Father Bob believed unapologetically, unapologetically in the full testimony of the scriptures on this point. He believed passionately, along with the fathers of the Second Vatican Council, that God distributes gifts and charisms to all the faithful of every rank for the upbuilding of the church. It was something he experienced in his own life through the grace of the baptism of the Holy Spirit in 1975. And he said it was the watershed experience of his whole life. He wholeheartedly agreed with Pope Paul VI, who called this tremendous grace in our time as a chance for the church. With blessed Pope John Paul II, who called this outpouring of the Holy Spirit a revolution of Christian living, of the living expression of the faith. He wanted everyone to know what Joseph Ratzinger, now Pope Benedict XVI, had identified as God's answer to the prayer and the plea of Blessed John XXIII at the convocation, the beginning of the Second Vatican Council. Send upon us, O Lord, as at the beginning, a new Pentecost in our time. To receive this to Father Bob was just another aspect of full surrender, of letting God be God. And he wanted everyone to experience the transforming power of the Holy Spirit, the joy of a life renewed, and the empowerment of the Holy Spirit through the wonderful and diverse array of charisms. He would often say that the Lord sits very reluctantly on the sidelines of our lives. Instead, he wants to be running the game, calling the plays, and leading us to victory every step of the way. He wants to lead us, disciple us, and empower us to do everything that he is asking of us. And finally, this vision of a responsive relationship with the living Lord Jesus was for Father Bob, the very heart of the mission of the whole church. 
In 1975, after his own personal Pentecost, he read Pope Paul VI's apostolic exhortation on evangelization, and he said it completely changed his priesthood. It changed his priorities, it changed his homilies, it changed his manner of ministering. He understood in a new way the priority and the urgency of evangelization. He became, I believe, attuned in his heart to the infinite love of God with his burning desire for everyone to come to the knowledge of the truth and to be saved. The same zeal for souls burned hot in the heart of Father Bob Bedard. Proclaiming in a simple way the basic gospel message was his priority always in a way that people could understand, in a way that was attractive so that people would understand how much God loves them, so they could open their hearts to receive this gift of Jesus to eternal life. And he saw that when people responded positively to the Lord and opened their hearts to him, the Holy Spirit backed it up. He moved in with conviction, love, and transforming grace. And as Father Bob would point out, then our catechesis makes sense. Then people are willing to hear. Then they're asking the questions that we're trying to answer. Then the sacraments will have their full effect. Then they will be encounters with the Lord. Then there will be true worship of the Lord and communion with Jesus. For him it was very simple. And it was the heart of everything that mattered. It became his consuming passion to see Jesus known and to see Jesus loved. He seems to say that he loved being a priest. And the thing he loved most is that we are in the privileged position of seeing God work. And he would say that there is nothing more wonderful in the whole world than watching God go to work. To see someone come alive in the Lord. And so he believed that this was the key to the success of the whole church's mission. Only a renewed people can renew the church. Only a people on fire can spread the fire. Only a people in love, in love with the Lord, can be vessels of his infinite love to the world. And this is exactly what the world most desperately needs. There is so much more that I could say and probably should say, but... I see by my watch that I've, I've got the charism of Father Bob in speaking long as well. <laughs> but I think this is the essence of what he would want me to say. And this is, I believe, the essential witness and the patrimony that he leaves us. And I pray that we are able to honor him and give glory to God by living it faithfully and generously. I would just like to conclude then where I began in commending Father Bob to the Lord. We give him back to the Lord with hearts filled with gratitude and love and with great confidence. Not because Father Bob was without spot or wrinkle. He wasn't. As none of us are except for the Blessed Virgin. But he was very quick to point out his own failures and struggles, often right in his homilies in the most humorous and self-effacing ways and somehow in a way that gave us permission to be real too. That gave us permission to still be striving for that fullness that the Lord wanted for us. No, we have confidence because the Lord is all love and mercy, and Father Bob was all his. One of Father Bob's favorite scriptures was 2 Chronicles 16.9. The eyes of the Lord roam over all the earth, to find those who are wholehearted for him, so that he may raise them up. I believe that the Lord found just such a man in our beloved Father Bob. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the life, the friendship, and the fatherhood of this beautiful man. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this faithful servant of the gospel. Amen. Brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is risen from the dead 
and sits at the right hand of the Father, where he intercedes for his church. Confident that God hears the voices of those who trust in the Lord Jesus, we now join our prayers to his. For Father Bob Bedard, and for our deceased relatives and friends, that they may have the fullness of life in the presence of God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all of us gathered here, that our faith may be stronger than our sense of loss, and that our hope may remain undiminished. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the church, that she may reveal to the world that Jesus Christ is the giver of everlasting life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all those who serve us in priestly ministry, that they may be faithful to the gospel and find joy in their life and ministry, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For those who are ill and infirm, and for those who care for them, that they may know the healing presence of the divine physician, Jesus Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Lord God, giver of peace and healer of souls, Hear the prayers of the Redeemer, Jesus Christ, and the voices of your people, whose lives were purchased by the blood of the Lamb. Forgive the sins of all who sleep in Christ, and grant them a place in the kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that this, our sacrifice, may be pleasing to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, for the grace and glory of his name, for our good and the glory of the Church. Lord God of mercy, may the sacrifice we offer for Robert, your servant and priest, bring him forgiveness and love. As once he offered sacrifice to you in his wholehearted service to your church, grant this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. In him who rose from the dead, our hope of resurrection dawn. The sadness of death gives way to the bright promise of immortality. Lord, for your faithful people, for your faithful people, life is changed, not ended. When the body of earthly dwelling lies in death, we gain an everlasting dwelling place in heaven. And so with all the choirs of angels in heaven, we proclaim your glory and join in their unending hymn of praise. 
Jesus Christ, our Lord, by the working of the Holy Spirit. From age to age, you gather a people to yourself, so that from east to west, a perfect offering may be made to the glory of your name. And so, Father, we bring you these gifts. We ask you to make them holy by the power of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate this Eucharist. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread and gave you thanks and praise. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and praise, gave the cup to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Son endured for our salvation, his glorious resurrection and ascension into heaven, and ready to greet him when he comes again, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look with favor on your church's offering, and see the victim whose death has reconciled us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by his body and blood may be filled with his Holy Spirit and become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make us an everlasting gift to you and enable us to share in the inheritance of your saints with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with the Apostles, the Martyrs, St. Joseph, and all your saints on whose constant intercession we rely for help. Lord, may this sacrifice which has made our peace with you advance the peace and salvation of all the world, strengthen in faith and love your pilgrim church on earth, your servant, Pope Benedict, me, your unworthy servant, and all the bishops with the clergy and the entire people your son has gained for you. Father, hear the prayers of the family who have gathered here before you. In mercy and love, unite all your children wherever they may be. Remember Robert. In baptism he died with Christ. May he also share his resurrection when Christ will raise our mortal bodies and make them like his own in glory. Welcome into your kingdom our departed brothers and sisters and all who have left this world in your friendship. There we hope to share in your glory when every tear will be wiped away. On that day, we shall see you, our God, as you are. We shall become like you and praise you forever through Christ our Lord, from whom all good things come. <clears throat> Who him with him in him 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins but on the faith of your church and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of the Lord's peace. Christ.
It's all been said and done There is just one thing that matters Did I do my best to live for truth? Did I live my life? It's all been said and done. All my 
It's all been said and done. There is just one thing that matters. Did I do my best to live for true? Did I live my life? Let us pray. Lord, hear the prayers of those you renew with the food of life at your holy table. By the power of this sacrifice, may Robert, your servant and priest, rejoice in your presence forever as he served you faithfully in the church. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him again, when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. In baptism, Robert shared in the death and resurrection of Christ. May he be welcomed into the glory of eternal life.
As a mark of respect for our brother, we let this incense rise before God. To his aid, O saints of God, come to him, angels of the Lord, receive his soul, holy ones, present him now to God most high. May Christ We commend our brother Robert in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him with on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Robert in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with the assurances of faith till we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brother forever and ever. Amen. affection and every gesture of friendship that you give to others be a sign of God's peace for you. In peace, let us take our brother to his place of rest. Amen. Let us go now in the peace of Christ.